Hello, and thank you for joining us today in our study of the book of Psalms. Today we come to Psalm 111, and here in this psalm, you have a short glorification of the works of the Lord. Now, it's only 11 verses in length. We don't have the author specifically listed, nor do we have a timetable for when it is written, other than during those days of the Old Testament during which the Psalms were written. But there's a few things that are very uh, important and helpful to us from this psalm. So let's look at Psalm 111. Beginning in verse 1, we read, Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart, in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given food to those who fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has declared to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are verity and justice. All his precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. As you look at Psalm 111, there are several things that we could spend a great deal of time talking about when it comes to the attributes and the works of the Lord. But let's go through and examine a couple of things that have some relevance to us as well, uh, but also have some relevance to the message that is being given. The first one is found in verse 2. He says, The works of the Lord are great, and they are studied by all who have pleasure in them. You know, when it comes to understanding the works of God, knowing more about who God is, what God does, and how God works, when it comes to all of those various things, they require an interest of study. They require a willingness to want to know more. And we study things that we are interested in, things that we have pleasure in. When we decide what it is we want to spend our time looking at and researching and understanding, it's based upon things that we enjoy. There are things that some people spend time researching and studying on that I have absolutely no interest in. And so therefore, I'm not going to spend an exorbitant amount of time looking at those things. But the things that I am interested in, it's easy to get lost in. And it's easy to spend hour upon hour looking at those things. And they can come from all different sides and vantage points in life. The writer here of the Psalms says that the works of the Lord are studied by those who have pleasure in them. Those who want to know more. Those who desire to understand and take pleasure in what God has done for them. When we understand who God is, does it cause us to want to know more about him? When, when we see the works of God, do we want to see them in further detail? Do we want to know more about them? The works of the Lord are designed and intended to cause us to want to know more about him, to want to understand him better. And therefore, they are studied by those who have pleasure in them. There are many other aspects that we can talk about, about what the works of the Lord are and what the Lord does. But I want to drop down to verse number 9, because it says, He has sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. He has sent redemption to his people. The, the ability to redeem, to, to bring them back to his side, to be able to place them where they need to be. 
Now, in the context of Psalm 111, he is talking about redemption to his people Israel, that he has taken care of them, he has brought them back, he has given all of these different things that are discussed in verses 3 through 8, and, and he has helped them in all of these different ways to be where they need to be so that they can be fruitful and successful. In our day and time, in New Testament times, we also have redemption that has been sent through Jesus Christ. We have redemption that is made available not just to a particular nation or not just to a particular group of people, but rather redemption that is made available to all men by means of the blood of Christ. And therefore, this particular idea is still valid, but on an even greater scale than in its original context because of the works of God that should cause us to want to study and understand more. He has sent redemption to his people. And then the last phrase of verse 9, holy and awesome is his name. And certainly, in examining the works of God and what God has done for mankind and how God has helped and interacted with us in, in our lives and in the things that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, we should be able to look at God and say, Holy and awesome is his name. These are some of the things that I see in Psalm 111. I hope that they are beneficial to you. Thank you so much for watching the video today. Next time we'll come back and we'll begin looking at Psalm 112. I hope you'll join us then. Until then, have a great day.